Greetings. It has been too long since I last spoke to you. Did you miss me? I missed you. But fear not, my children, I have returned to continue my glorious history of Halloween the Horror Nights. But before I proceed with recounting the wondrous events of the year 2005 and Halloween Horror Nights 15 Tales of Terror, I would like to make a special request. Last year, when attending the wonderful informative sessions in the VIP lounge at Halloween Horror Nights 20, 20 Years of Fear, I learned to my surprise and, well, also deep flattery, uh, that there were some members of Arts and Design at Universal Studios who were actually fans of my videos and enjoyed watching them as well. Surely they could learn nothing from me, as they're the people that know all things that I could never even dream to learn about. But nevertheless, they seemed to appreciate it, and I was greatly humbled to find this out. And satisfied, too, of course. It did boost my ego, naturally. Anyway, if since, since that is true, uh, then hopefully some of those stalwart gentlemen some of those remarkable creators of the event we all love so much may be listening to me right now. And it is to you, then, that I'm sending this request. In uh, previous videos concerning the events of Halloween Horror Nights 13 and 14, I think, I mentioned the extreme house concept. But, uh, as TJ Mananaro had, uh, uh, had said not to post anything on YouTube. I have declined to go into detail about what that house would have been like. But then another fellow who called himself Spaghetti Western Fan or something like that, uh, Italian Western Review, pointed out to me in the comments, those little things you find written underneath uh, my videos by people who've appreciated or in some cases did not appreciate them, uh, <clears throat> pointed out that just talking about the house should be okay, and what, what TJ actually meant was not to videotape their presentation and post that on YouTube. So, uh, with that possibility, I would like then to have this request. Um, if it is acceptable for me to present a video where I talk about what I learned in that VIP lounge and, and what the Extreme House was going to be like that year, uh, of course, it never happened, but it was original plans. If it's acceptable for me to post such a video, please let me know, either in one of those nifty comments, or, or better yet, email or, or uh, through uh, messaging or whatever, uh, and let me know that uh, that is acceptable, and then I'll proceed and post that same video here immediately as I've already made the video I just have it you know tucked away in some dark crevice hidden in my computer for future use if it is not acceptable and you let me know that well then I will delete the thing altogether but I will wait until I am told it's all right before I go ahead with it fair enough now that out of the way, we can proceed with the wonders and terrors that occurred six years ago at Halloween Horror Nights 15 Tales of Terror. <laughs> Last year, I learned quite a bit about some of the amazing things that were happening behind the scenes prior to the event being hosted that year. Yes, there's all sorts of amazing things that none of us ever knew about. And this, of course, was also learned in that remarkable sessions that they had in the VIP lounge at uh, last year's event. A nifty idea. I hope they continue uh, this year. <clears throat> at any rate, Apparently, in 2005, planning out the event, they had decided, uh, they had not actually decided ahead of time uh, to just go ahead and put it back in Islands Adventure. Halloween Horror Nights had been at Islands Adventure now uh, for two years, um, well, from 2002 
in 2003, and then the preceding year, they had gone with a two-puck, excuse me, two-part concept, including uh, both uh, Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure in a combined thrilling two times the fear event, as you've seen in my previous videos. So, what would they do this year? Uh, well, they had an idea. Well, they could take it back to Universal Studios Florida and do it there for the first time since 2001, or they could just hold it back at Islands of Adventure again. And they were thinking about that. And because of that, they were looking at those two parks. Which one would they use? Well, they, they weren't really thinking about doing both parks at the same time again because that, and uh, you know, they just did that. And uh, and you know, there was complications. You know, one or the other. But they had uh, they were thinking about the different parks and what those parks had to offer for Halloween Horror Nights and how that would fit in with the theme because each park is quite different from each other. There were pros and cons for both parks, things that made that were really good about one park and really good about the other park and, and how they differed, the experience of the guests going into either park. First of all, when you enter uh, Universal Studios Florida, of course, you could go on Hollywood Boulevard or you can go up the, the uh, Avenue of the Stars toward New York. You have this choice, and so you can go one way or another, and you could end up having very different experiences when you go into Universal Studios Florida, depending on which way you decide to go. And that also fit in with Halloween Horror Nights every time they held it, because, of course, you might go one way or another, and you might encounter certain scares in houses first or others, depending on your, your whim or your fancy as you enter the, the park. Whereas Island's Adventure, of course, you could go right or left, naturally, and go in that circle around the lagoon. However, they had kind of forced people to go in a clockwise manner. People tend to do that anyway, especially in this part of the world where you read from right to left and and uh, and uh, uh, clocks go that way. And so it's just, just normal for us to go in that direction. We drive on the left side of the street, at least in the United States, uh, unless you happen to live in Denmark, the UK, Australia, or Japan, uh, or New Zealand, then you would naturally go left. And uh, and that's, that's just sort of inculcated into our brains. Plus, uh, to further that, when they held the event in 2002 and 2003, they had these little fellows standing there pushing you left because they would open certain houses first, and that was just... Because uh, Bill and Ted was that way too, and you might want to see that show first. It was all sorts of things to make you go in that direction. Well, so it was sort of like you... And you couldn't really double back. I mean, you could, but then you go back to what you've already seen, so your natural inclination would be follow one one path around the Islands of Adventure. And if you go into Islands of Adventure, even when it's not the event, that's, that's normal. You tend to go one way or the other, and then you go on this one circular path. You, it's not like uh, at Universal Studios Florida. You could go up Hollywood Boulevard, then cut around Mel's Diner, go up to New York, or you could go the other way into what is now Kid Zone, or you can go up towards, San, you know, go up over into that uh, uh, Men in Black um, you know, World's Fair area, I forget what it's called off the top of my head, but you know the area I'm talking about, Simpsons now, back then I think it was something, uh, was it Was it still, was it still uh, Back to the Future in 2005? Memories, I think so, yeah. And back to that area, you can go that way, and then come back through around Amity, and then go through San Francisco, New York, or you could cut through right on, uh, on the other side, you can, you know, you could just cut by, you know, go up into New York or San Francisco that way, you could go up Shrek Alley, and, you know, and go up there. You, you, there's so many different ways you could go. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, it's the guest has much more freedom to choose his own fate, his own path, <laughs> his own uh, desire. Whereas you're pretty much stuck going on one circular route, regardless of which way you go first. You know, some people want to go this way and go to what is now Harry Potter, but back then was you know uh, lost continent and, you know, get the dungeons and, dra you know, doing dragons, dungeons and dragons. Ooh, betraying my old geekness. Uh, you know, ah, middle-aged geek, obviously, played Dungeons and Dragons in high school. Uh -huh. mm. uh, 
All right, you, yeah, that's right. You know, you jocks beat me up back then, but now, now the the, the geeks and nerds then run the world. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, I pity, I pity the bullies and jocks who picked on Bill Gates when he was in high school. Where are they now? Probably dead. <laughs> I'm not saying he had them whacked or anything, but he could have. Anyway, you can go up this way, come around the other way. Uh, you know, it, it's it's. You're not going to be running to Harry Potter and going to Toon Lagoon, then going back around to Jurassic Park. No, you're likely to go completely around. You're sort of kind of forced to go one way or the other, whether you know it or not. <clears throat> so, thinking about that, they also thought about uh, the structure, the architecture of the parks. Uh, when you go into uh, uh, either you go to Hollywood Boulevard or the Plus Art, you have this big, wide, freaking I mean, it's huge. It's a wide street, you know, with the sidewalks on either side. You know, that's why parades worked. And that park and that idea of a parade never really was something they couldn't do at Odds Adventure. The streets are narrower, far more, uh, you know, it's, it's more, things are closer to you from either side of the road, you know. So they're thinking about all of these things, how they could utilize a different experience that a guest has in each park and how that would fit into the theme of Halloween Horror Nights. And so thinking about that, and especially the idea of, of a guest seems to, you know, choose his own path in one side and more or less direct in the other, they came up with two icons uh, and two concepts for each park, which sort of fit the way that uh, each park was built and structured for the guest uh, experience. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. So the idea they had at Universal Studios Florida was the icon would be fate. As I said, choose your fate, that was the idea. Because you could take different routes and have a different experience every time you enter Universal Studios of Florida, why not make Halloween Horror Nights a different experience every time you went? It wouldn't just be the same. So they would have the idea that this icon would be fate, the personification of fate. And she was a, a beautiful woman who had no eyes. That's right, blind fate. <laughs> Blood trickling down like tears. Rather groovy, kind of sexy chick in a, in a sick way. Uh, and a lot of people who saw that really got turned on by that icon. Not, not, in the, not that kind of turned on, but they thought it was really cool. And, and this would be a neat icon they could bring back someday. Maybe they will. So this this character of fate then uh, controlled your fate to some degree, but you had to pick and choose. There, might, there were all sorts of ideas of having like uh, different experiences in queue lines and in houses. You might have more than one path to take in a house, a la the old uh, Universal House of Horror houses, but even changing it up more. Uh, you might be picked out of the line to go on one route or the other randomly, and you wouldn't know which, which house you would go into until you went into it. Uh, that kind of thing. So, And there are ideas of more games of chance type of feel to it. Uh, the whole thing would be sort of a carnival, because, of course, Universal Studios Florida has a carnivalesque feel to it, with all of the games and, uh, and the Midway. You know, they had a wonderful Midway the Bazaar scare zone for many years for that very reason, and, and games of chance, and that idea that in some places you might actually have to play a game, and how you won or didn't win that game would affect what, what house or scare zone or whatever you're going to go into. You know, that way your experience would be different every time, and you'd have to go back over and over again to get all the different nuances and flavors and feels of the event. Of course, that would appeal far more to local guests who would be able to attend more often than, say, people who came over from uh, out of state and uh, from other parts of, the, of Florida or other parts of the world and would only be able to attend once. God save them. But still, it was a neat idea that they were working on. So they had this, this, this idea that they put up. The other idea was, for Island, for Island's Adventure, of course, was to come up with a more... Uh, a traditional concept, but the idea was a, a darkness was their icon. Now, darkness was not the Lord of Darkness, aka the big horn guy from Legend, uh, by, by Tim Curry in the film Legend, that has appeared at Halloween Horror Nights before this in, in the uh, Festival of Living Dead parade and later had a very big part the following year in 2006. No, uh, this was an entirely new concept, darkness itself personified as an entity, and not maybe not just one entity, 
but perhaps it had a multiple personality aspect of being in many places at many times and having more than one face. Now that's an interesting idea, but I'm coming close to the 15 minute mark. I think I can go past 15 minutes now, but I'm going to cut each video to right about 15 minutes. So see you part two. <laughs>